so it's a bell inch. Oh, wait, I don't have a video. Oh, I don't have a video. I'm looking like... Um, where was I? Yeah, you'll have noticed that this is a bit of a longer video to what I'm normally putting out. But I initially made these videos for people that had a little bit of... So I initially made these videos for people that had like a tiny bit of blender experience already under their belt. Um, but looking at some of the comments that I've been getting and questions, I've realized that I'm nurturing a large demographic of people that are picking up blender literally for the first time. Um, so I thought, let me make a comprehensive one-stop guide for all the fundamental principles of blender and 3D in general. This is my introduction to blender 101 um in this video we're going to be going over the following concepts uh let me see if i can remember these off by heart so we're going to be going over modeling physics simulations materials uvs lighting and hdris um animating rendering compositing not in that particular order but we're going to be going through quite a number of things so it took me ages to come up with a project that could encapsulate all of the fundamental principles of 3d in one easy to access concise cool looking render um and then it literally dawned on me there's actually only one thing that we all want to make right now and that's a vaccine for this coronavirus pandemic that we're living through no donuts no donuts out here so I thought, let's make the vaccine. And I don't know how well this video is going to age. I don't know what 2021 has in store, but let's just hope for the best. Um, and that's what we're going to be making today. This, um, this, you'll hopefully have something like this at the end of this video. So let's start from the top. I'm using Blender 2.91 always make sure you update your blender functionality changes between each installment this little corner of my desktop is where i keep all the versions of blender that i need for different purposes so 2.91 is just, just the most up-to-date one 2.82 is better at doing certain things and i have blender for octane as well just wanted to quickly note that the beginning of this video might be a bit slow for people that already kind of have the basics of blender down um but as we progress, I'll just go off the assumption that you're picking things up and I won't mention every single key that I press, um, but trust me, you'll get the hang of it really soon. Anyway, PSA over. Um, but here we are in a new Blender scene, um, so we're going to hit general and you're always presented with three things. The ongoing joke is that everyone deletes the default cube but in this case we're not going to delete him the first thing you're going to encounter in blender is navigating around so i see that a lot of people are using macbooks <coughs> to do their renders or laptops etc you're going to need an external mouse you can't do this with a trackpad i'm sorry because we're going to be using the middle mouse button to navigate so i'm going to quickly literally two seconds show how you move around once you have an object selected you can scroll in and out um, to zoom into it. Um, if you want to pan around the scene, you hold the shift button and then you use the middle mouse button in conjunction with that to move around. And if you want to rotate, um, you just hold the middle mouse button and move it about. So when you add a third axis, we're all used to working in 2D on Photoshop or whatever, but when you add a third axis, that's when things get a bit different. Um, so definitely get a mouse, that's the one thing I would advocate for. Um, and now we've got that out of the way, let's let's start making something over here. In this particular example, we're going to keep the cube, so just hit H and that's going to hide it. We're going to use it later. It's still up here, but it's just hidden if you can see all that. So in 3D modelling, a key principle is abstraction. You don't look at this as a set of headphones, you look at it as We've got some cylinders over here. We've got um, a cube that is kind of elongated over here. So you'll literally find yourself walking around thinking, mm, how can I model that tree? That's a cylinder and then a bunch of planes for the leaves. Like you literally look around, you see the world in a different way. I'm gonna stop talking now, let's start building. So the building blocks of objects are called meshes. Um, so if you hit shift A, you can bring up this menu here and we're gonna hit mesh and we're going to insert 
a cylinder my eyes are bleeding apparently so we've got a cylinder um we're not going to change any properties down here just going to click away that looks good to me we're going to now stretch our cylinder this way these different tools let you manipulate your meshes in different ways um, so we're going to scale it and we're going to use this blue axis over here so just drag that up um, to however much you like I reckon that's all right I've got a little drawing down here that I'm referencing um, and obviously a cylinder the vaccine doesn't look this jagged so we're going to start um, making it a bit smoother the first thing you can always try and do is shade smooth by right clicking the object and hit shade smooth that looks a bit weird though so we're just going to keep it shaded flat and we're going to use a modifier over here um, and we're going to use a subdivision surface modifier it basically uses the catmull cart principle to figure out the best way to smooth out a shape and if you increase the viewport up here it looks really smooth but it looks nothing like a cylinder so the way to negate that is if we quickly turn that off we can add some loop cuts around it to tell it where we want it to smooth out um, up to a certain point so to add loop cuts we're going to enter edit mode by hitting tab on our keyboard over here um, and edit mode you'll see that you get a lot more options because we're um, editing the individual object in isolation so if you hit Control r and hover over your shape you should get um, if you move it around you'll get different options but we want this this round option here click it once and you'll see you can move it about and we're going to add the loop cut at the top and we're going to add a loop cut at the bottom and then i want to show you what that does if we turn the modifier back on you'll notice that it's kept the shape and that's because the loop cuts indicate where you kind of want the modifier to have less of an effect or more of an effect um so this still looks nothing like what we're going to go for so we're going to add a couple more loop cuts um if you hold alt and select that bottom edge um, we're going to press e and then s to scale it down and then we're going to actually move actually we're going to press e s again make it small in the middle and bring that up now in blender if you want to bring things up by a small amount um, when you're dragging what you can do is you can hold shift while you while you're doing this action and when you hold shift you'll notice it just goes in tiny tiny increments so you have more control over what you're doing but um, we're gonna make this inset press ES again and now we've got the inside of the bottle sorted Alt button and select this to get our top face ES to bring it in small so we're going to press ES again just to bring that in a tiny bit and then E to bring that up and ES again to flatten that out. We actually want it to be a bit more curved so we can go in and edit our um, shapes a bit more again. Um, and then we're going to actually select, I'm going to quickly turn the modifier off, um, holding Alt and Shift to select that ring, that ring, that ring and that ring and scale it down a bit turn the modifier back on and we can see that we're getting a bit more of a rounded effect um, press s again to scale it i want this edge to be quite like rounded and we're going to hold alt on this edge oh, scale that down there we go mm, not too much so now we're kind of getting like a bottle kind of look. Um, we'll put the lid on and see what more modeling we want to do. So we're going to add another mess. Mess? We're going to add a uh, mess because my modeling skills are a mess, I can't lie. I'm probably going to bump that up to five, depending on how much your computer can take. Um, so yeah, hit Shift A again and we're going to add another mesh. We're going to add a cylinder this time. And again, we're going to add that same modifier we had last time drag that up a little bit um so increase that a bit turn that off go into edit mode with tab hit r oh firstly i need to scale it down to be honest um need that and scale this down to be lid kind of size 
so we're going to also use this thing called orthographic mode which shows you the side on um, mode of objects and just now I hit one on my numpad but not everybody has a numpad on their keyboard so if you do not have a numpad on your keyboard you can emulate it by going to edit preferences input and then hit this emulate numpad I don't really need to have that turned on but if you're working on a laptop or a small keyboard then have that on so by pressing one you go to side mute mute side view but seven will show you the top view anyway so we want this to be how big does it have to be maybe a bit smaller on the side i have no idea what a vaccine portal even looks like that looks, oh, that looks kind of legit. It looks a bit weird. Um, I'm going to change it a little bit. Let's make the middle a bit taller. So let's just quickly go back into that edit mode. Um, turn that off. I'm going to select all those rings of Alt and Shift again. I'm going to make it slightly bigger and hit those last two and bring those up a bit. Uh, it's looking a bit more legit. Yeah, 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 that looks a lot more legit, actually, I didn't realize, yeah. Anyway, turn that modifier back on, so we still need to add some loop cuts. Go back into tab, add some more loop cuts up here. Sorry if my methodology isn't great. I don't remember doing that so let's make it back to some around okay so the bottle is coming along we're just going to smooth this out go to five and then in tab we're going to es again extrude and scale that just this top one so es scale it out and that will sort of give you a smoother top and do the same for the bottom actually this last one es there we go Okay, for now I'm going to leave it at that, I think. That's just literally some very, very basic um, modelling. And it looks pretty boring right now, but trust me, this is going to start um, coming together very soon. So one more thing we're going to add is a label on the front. I'm so going to do Shift A, add a, another cylinder. It's the last cylinder, I promise. Um, we're going to scale it down tiny bit um, so once we've added the cylinder and we're going to go into edit mode and hit the face mode up here select that top face and delete it uh, faces and select that bottom face and delete that faces so we've just got like a label kind of shape coming on over here um, back into object mode shades move sorted. I'm going to add a modifier to this called the shrink wrap modifier, if I can see it. Um, we're going to hit this other cylinder as the target and the offset to just as it peaks out of the bottle. Um, and in tab I'm going to lastly just bring that edge up. another loop cut in here and scale that up Ooh. slowly scale that out a bit okay so this is our final modeled item object um, again this was just very minimal modeling I just didn't want to go too overboard I hope it was easy to follow along with um, and the next step we're going to go into is hmm. so hold down Z and move your mouse up to rendered and this is what you're going to get it's just very very plain looking nothing much is going on I'm just trying to decide what render engine I want to use in this button up here under um, render properties We've got two different render engines we can use. 
let's firstly add a background to our animation. So up here, we just drag where you get the four corners and open a new window. And up here, we're going to go to Shader Editor, change object to world, and you should have used nodes ticked on. Um, and to add a black background with a HDRI, we're going to add a bunch of nodes here. So first, hold Shift E to duplicate that background node. <clears throat> We're gonna add another node with Shift A, and it's gonna be a environment texture. And we're gonna plug that into this top background node. And we're gonna add another node called Light Path. And the last node we're gonna need is a Mix Shader. So Shift A, Mix Shader. Drag it on top of this line that's existing there. Bring your background into Shader and is camera ray into factor. Now you can change this color to whatever you want as the background. And you might be wondering, what's, what's this thing for and why is my thing suddenly pink? So we're gonna hit open and we're going to use a HDRI. I have a folder full of them. So HDRIs are basically images that sit in the background of your scene, um, which give your objects, you know, data on, on lighting and reflections if the objects happen to be shiny. So essentially they just make renders super good. And if you wanna get HDRIs, you can just go to HDRI Haven and they just have loads and loads and loads of HDRIs with different kind of like, you know, looks here. So you can get something urban, which nobody actually understands what urban really means. Um, and, and, and you can have like outdoor ones or like, you know, indoor ones um, and they're all pretty cool and you can download them at any different like, you know, I need to stop saying you know because you might not know, you know, um, but yeah, you can get them at different um, file sizes um, and it's just really good. So go ahead and pick HDRI and go and use it in your scene. Bye now. Um, I will link in the description the HDRI that I've chosen. Um, so I think I'm going to just use this one. So now it's gone back to being white and you kind of don't un see what is going on here. Um, and I'll show you now. We're going to add a material by going into this material tab and hitting new. And if you change this metallic value up a bit, you can see that it's starting to look a bit different. If you bring roughness all the way down to zero, you can see you're starting to get some reflections. And these reflections are caused by the HDRI that you've chosen. What is a good one that I can show you the difference? Yeah, so there you go. Um, I'm probably gonna use... I'm going to go for the one that I originally chose. Um, and it doesn't need to be this metallic, that was just to show an example. So now we're going to cover materials and UVs. So for this project, we're going to use EV, I've decided. Um, we're going to call this material glass. Um, now there are some a few ways to get glass to look somewhat believable and easy but again this is just a stylized render so the first thing is go to transmission and turn that all the way up to one but you'll notice it's not really transmitting much light it's kind of just still reflecting it so we quickly need to go into some settings here go into your render settings and um, click yes to ambient bloom and screen space um, under screen space tick refraction and then go back to your materials and under <laughs> sorry took me ages refraction depth refra refraction depth um, click on screen space refraction and then why is my computer just um, we're gonna keep it quite low that's the best way we can get glass looking glass in rent in in EV. Um, that kind of shows what is behind it a little bit, kind of. Um, so let's go ahead and start adding materials to the rest of it. Um, another thing that we did click on in our render settings was bloom. 
um, if you reduce the threshold you'll notice that your object is glowing and it looks really cute um, just play around with these settings until you get a glow that you like you can make the glow very contained by reducing the radius which I think looks quite cool actually um, so we're going to add a material to this lid I don't even know what the lid is made of so it's a shiny kind of it's a shiny kind of metal so we're going to go into materials here so we're going to add a new material over here um, brushed metal um, keep the base as white for now bring metallic all the way up roughness kind of down so we got it kind of looking a little bit rough not too shiny <coughs> to offset the really shiny glass <coughs> i need some water oh that water's really old no 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 yeah. but if we change this world up here to object we can go ahead and kind of use some nodes to make this tiny, tiny bit more in interesting. I'm actually going to leave the lid as is, I don't mind it like that. I'm going to add a bit of like a blotchy effect to the glass as if somebody is like held in their hand. So um, with this node setup that we've got here, I'm going to hit shift A and we're going to add a colour ramp. Spelt the American way. Ugh. I'm going to plug colour into roughness. Then we're going to add a Musgrave texture and hit height into factor. We're going to add a mapping node, vector into vector. And we're going to add a, um, what's she called? We're going to add um, texture coordinate. Yeah, my bad an object into vector. So now, I don't know if you can see that kind of like smudgy, smudgy McSmudgerson. I kind of like it as it is. I might make it a tiny bit bigger if it lets me now. I might just fiddle with this a little bit more. It's the harsher it is, is the closer you bring these two together. Um, but I kind of liked it not being too harsh. So we had the entire spectrum. Um, and that way we've got a little bit of, you know, surface imperfection. You should really have a clean vaccine bottle, I think, but this is the imaginary world, okay? We can do whatever we want. Um, so yeah, play around with these settings until you get something that you like. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at UVs. Now I'll try and explain UVs as simply as I possibly can. Um, we're going to change this window up here to UV editor. And in edit mode, we're going to select everything by hitting A. And we're going to, actually we're going to mark out our seam. So essentially UVs are when you take an object, unwrap it, and then you create a material separately in Photoshop or something like that and apply it perfectly onto the UV map which projects the picture you made onto your object. I hope that made sense, but you're going to see it in action now. So we're going to quickly mark out our scenes by hitting um, face select and we're going to hit just hit one of any one of these lines up here. You can't really see it because I've got the um, subdivision surface on. If I turn that off quickly. Um, so select any one of these with um, edge select and right click right click it and hit mark seam we're also going to mark seams at the top so we're just going to hit alt and hold that and mark seam hold alt and mark that and mark that seam as well so essentially we've said is where you should cut it and I'll show you what I mean now. If we hit A to select all of these faces, press U and hit unwrap, we now have our UV map projection. So essentially if I go in Photoshop and I design something that will fit within this, this bar, um, that will then show up on my object. 
what we can do now is export this UV layout. So we go to UV, export UV layout, um, and call it label. And I'm just gonna save that to there. Fill opacity 0.25, that's good. So now if I go to Photoshop and I open up a new project. Um, if I go open that picture, UV label, there we are. Now I have exactly the blueprint of what I need to design. This is probably the simplest UV you're ever going to encounter. Um, they get quite complicated after this, but I just want to give you guys sort of an introduction to lots of different elements of 3D. I'm just going to quickly make a label for my um, vaccine. So I finished making my label, if you don't want to make one that's fine, I'm going to put um, my label in the description so you can use mine, but I would definitely suggest you go ahead and make it yourself. Okay, let's get the label up in here, so we're going to, first you go back to the shade editor, and in objects mode, select our label, add a new material, and we're going to hit shift A and hit image texture and drag that into base color and we're going to open up the picture that we made the label i made covid label now it's upside down at the moment so we're going to go back into uv editor um hit tab hit a Ooh. and so now we can see our labels in here but because it's upside down um just hit a to select all the vertices hit R and as you're rotating it with your mouse hold the shift button to snap it sorry control to snap it into 180 degrees now we got our label and it's the right way up and I don't know what accent that was and yeah that's what it's looking like now um but we want to add some zhuzh. we want to zhuzh up the label a little bit it's looking a little bit flat so let's go to free, um, shade editor again, bring the roughness down to make the label quite like shiny. Um, we're going to bring the metallic a tiny bit up and we're also going to add a bump node, plug normal into normal and we're going to add mud grave and then plug height into height. Um, that's gonna make it look a bit crinkly, but this is clearly too crinkly. Like I would not trust that being injected into my body. I wouldn't trust this va this vaccine being injected either way. Um, but let's just bring the scale down a bit to a somewhat believable crinkliness. But obviously, we're just doing this to make it look nicer. We we just yeah. So play around with that again, I encourage you to not copy every value that I use, just you play around with what you've got because um, ultimately when you are making your own render it's never going to be completely identical to mine. So I think that's looking quite cool um, and now if you saw in my final render there's one thing missing, we're going to need to do like a shrink wrap kind of situation going on here. Um, but the first thing I want to do quickly is um, we want to parent everything to one specific object so that everything follows. For instance, if I show you now, if we go to move our bottle, it's not it's not moving together. So I'm going to select these two label and the lid, and then select the bottle for last. You'll notice that the bottle is highlighted in like a lighter orange to the other two because that's your active object. Um, and hit control P and then click object so now if we move the lid the lid moves on its own the label moves on its own but if we move the bottle mm, the bottle does not move on its own it brings the rest of the objects with it so that's our vaccine sorted okay so let's move on to physics 
and I know what you're going to say. You're wearing a different outfit. Your hair's dishevelled. You look like you just woke up. All of those things are true, but we're just going to move past it, okay? Let's do the physics. I filmed this tutorial on the same day. Don't ask questions. I have not geographically displaced halfway across the UK back to my home to film the rest of this video. So, physics. Let's turn our bottle on its side um, so we can um, animate the shrink wrap thingy, which is the last part of this um, scene that we haven't modelled yet. So let's turn the bottle on its side by pressing R, X, 90. Um, the R stands for rotate, the X stands for the X axis, and 90 stands for 90 degrees clockwise. So selecting the main bottle, we're just going to rotate it a little bit. So we've got Intravax facing the front. Okay. So do you remember that cube that we hid at the beginning of this tutorial? Well, we're going to bring it back by hitting Alt-H. There we go, Alt-H. And that is the cube that is essentially what the mesh that we're going to... We're going to shrink wrap over our bottle. Um, so the first thing you're going to need to do before you do anything else is select all of these individual components of the bottle and make them collidable. Select um, the label for instance, hit collision under this little um, physics thingy and that's it, that's what you have to do. Then you hit your bottle, still under physics, hit collision and then do the same for your lid. So now that means that any physics that interacts with <coughs> these objects are going to collide with it rather than just going straight through which is what you see that happens a lot of the time in games when you get some errors. Um, so I've scaled up my square by hitting the S button and if you hold the Z button and go into wireframe you can kind of see what's going on a lot better. So back into edit mode I've just hit the tab button and we're going to right click and hit subdivide and we're going to go to I think 40 subdivisions is the one. That looks good. And then hit tab and now we're out of it um what we're gonna do next is go into hold z go into solid mode um hit tab again and so you can see all your faces you want to kind of keep it suspended in midair um so it doesn't move when we're doing the um animation um actually go back into wireframe and hit one on your numpad so you can see the side view and holding alt, how do you say alt or alt? I really don't know what to say. It's probably alt. Holding alt, select, oh, that wasn't alt, that was you. Select the, you might get a vertical one, which is fine, just keep selecting until you get a horizontal one. Get the one that's in the middle, closest to the middle of your circle as possible. And then go down here to vertex groups, create a new group, and we're gonna rename it middle. And then we're going to hit assign, and so go back into solid mode and to make sure that you've got it assigned click anywhere to just like deselect it and hit select and just toggle between them make sure that only that row is coming up um, and that's how you know that you've assigned that vertex group so now we're going to do some physics properties before we jump into these just be ready for it not to work be ready for your computer to explode if that's the case just skip this part um, you can, I'll leave a file of my finished physics sim if you really, if your computer really can't handle it, but if you want to model it, then that's fine. Let's quickly do these physics bits and bobs now. Key thing, this is Steph from the future speaking, save your project before you try any simulations. Just do it. I've forgotten to do it. I've forgotten to do it. But doesn't mean that you need to because I may well have lost all of this work now so hit tab to go into object mode um, we're gonna go to physics properties this one sorry and we're gonna hit cloth um, we're gonna change we'll leave the quality at five um, what else can we change here keep going down um, we're gonna go to frame zero and hit zero here and this is going to take us to zero. We're going to hit pressure and click that and change the pressure and don't change this at all but we're going to insert a keyframe by right clicking and clicking insert keyframe 
Then over here we're going to go to frame 30. Might take a second. Ignore what's going on in your viewport over here. Literally does not it's not um accurate just yet. We're gonna change this pressure to minus 160. And do these steps quite slowly because your computer's kind of like trying to compute it right now. Um, and then add another keyframe by right clicking and insert keyframe or you can just hover over that box and hit the I button. Okay, so we're going to keep going down here. We're going to change this from 0 to 30, the cache. Um, the pin group, we're going to select middle. That's the one that we made earlier. Keep going down. Um, we're going to change this quality steps to 5. Um, self collisions, we're going to tick that on and change the... No, that's fine. Um, and then bring gravity all the way down to 0. So now when we play this animation from 0, from frame 0, doo -doo -doo, um, your computer might might get a little bit funky but try and press the space bar and see what happens and it should collapse mm -hmm. or it might not respond key thing this is death from the future speed oh boy no uh uh mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. so you might get Sorry, Ben just crashed for me. I'm just gonna basically redo the whole process um, quickly. I'm gonna stop screen recording. Maybe that will help. So I turned off the screen record just so I could get the cache up. Um, I changed the pressure to 140 and this is what I've got. So do not fear, I'll explain more about what's going on here, but down here, basically this purple line shows that the animation has, you know, cached, it's saved to the cache, so move along it to somewhere where it looks quite nice, something like this. Um, and another thing you can do is, if you hold down Z and go into rendered, make sure that none of the bottle is showing through as well. Um, but back into solid, I'm just going to pick a frame of the animation that looks quite nice. Um, just let it do its thing, let it um, render out the cache, just don't touch your computer in the meantime. If you can't manage to do this part, I'm going to be dropping the entire blend file on Patreon, so you guys can, can take out whatever assets you like, and you know, play around with the settings and just mess around with basically what I've done. So, if you are still sticking with me, um, I quite like this frame and I'm quickly going to go into rendered and just double check that there's no collision, there's nothing, I can't see the vaccine bottle right now. So we're going to go back into solid, we're going to go to object and convert to mesh and then we're going to delete these keyframes here and the thing here delete keyframes awesome um so now we have this object and we're going to add a modifier we're going to add a subdivision surface now it's looking scrumptious very delicious <laughs> that was that was a disgusting sound um so you can bring up the viewport um i've hit two purely because um if we're going to render the animation at the end is going to be kind of like far away, so it doesn't really have to be that close to it. Um, yeah, I think I like that, that, like that. So I think two is enough in terms of viewport. Um, another thing we're going to add is just go back into solid view. One tiny last bit of modeling that we're going to do, literally the last bit of modeling, I promise. So we're going to add another cube, bring that along here, hit 7, 
and hit S to scale X for the X axis and drag your mouse until it's like the same size as this thing here, just um, SX, scale it and hold shift if you want to, you know, do it nice and precise and then hit 3 on your numpad, then hit S, Z and that will scale it um, on the other side and we're going to bring it down to something like that, yeah, perfect. We're going to add a um, UV sphere. We're going to duplicate it with Shift D. So we're going to hit, uh, we're going to hit Z and go into wireframe. Hit Tab, hit Seven, and we're going to select half of our of our sphere, drag it along, and make kind of like a pill shape. Hit Tab again, go into solid mode and bring this circle along over here and so if you can see we're building we're building the, that thingy you know the hangy thing so we're going to join these together by selecting them both and hitting ctrl j now we've got a con um, controlled joint now we have a joined shape hit s to scale it down hit seven again and basically oh, Seven again and basically scale it to the dimensions that you like. We're going to cut this shape out of the rectangle by clicking the rectangle, going to modifiers and adding a boolean modifier. With our eyedropper we can select the sphere shapes. It might disappear, that's fine, just click self. And then you'll see that nothing's happened, well it appears that nothing's happened. Select these um, circular shapes, go to object properties, go all the way to the bottom and in view viewport display, hit wire. And now you'll see that it's basically cut that shape out. Um, and yeah, that's basically all the modeling done. We're going to go to this rectangle in the modifiers panel, apply that. Perfect. We're going to delete that shape now. And that's the modeling done. Let's go into materials again. So we're going to hit Z, go to rendered view. And so everything's white and we can't see through to the vaccine bottle. So click your shrink wrap, go to materials, um, new material, but just click this little circle and go to glass. The same material we basically made for the bottle and now we've got a clear we've got some clear plastic and we can see our vaccine inside and this white we're going to create a new material I don't think I'm really going to do too much with that I feel like I'm just going to make it quite metallic bring the roughness down a bit um, I don't really want to play with it too much. I think I'm going to make it mud gravy. Like before, we're just going to add a bump texture. And mud grave. It just adds a little bit of um, natural texture to these things. Um, bring the scale kind of down a bit. So that's kind of really it for modeling. Um, we're gonna parent these we're gonna parent everything to this big plastic thingy so we can then manipulate it so we're going to go into wireframe select the bottle select the the late the handle and then select the wrapper for last and then control P object click object and then in rendered view, if you move the wrapper three seconds later, you then move everything. Okay, so hopefully I have not fried your computer in the process of making this. I quickly want to do a tiny little word on um, render engines. So this render engine is called Eevee and it's a real-time render engine and what that means is basically it calculates the lights and reflections all in real time to give you an image. If you go to this little camera icon and change this to cycles, 
and you'll then realize you'll see that it's quite um, um it looks more natural i suppose this is because it actually calculates all of the rays individually and it's just a way more of an advanced render engine it's harder to see what you're doing but if you render out in cycles it takes longer but they're often much higher quality renders but for this example i'll show you this in eevee which kind of it looks really cute either way um, one more thing I wanted to do is it looks quite like intense so I want to quickly do a little tiny bit of sculpting so in um, sculpt mode up here while we're selecting our brush I'm just going to get the smooth option and we're going to just smooth out some of this like really intense geometry um, you don't have to but I just like prefer it I think it just looks way too like wrinkly And that is pretty much it for all the modeling, sculpting, blah de da de da. We're gonna do some simple, simple animating just to conclude this video. So to bring up the camera, hit zero on your numpad. And now we've got the camera up. We're gonna change the aspect ratio to 1920 by 1920. And using this, um, in your view panel up here if you haven't got this panel hit n um and hit camera to view and that way you can kind of like i'm just thinking how i want even i'm gonna put it facing this way straight up and make sure once you're done modifying the camera angle you untick that so that you can like zoom in and out i'm gonna hit zero again and my camera is here so i'm going to Everything is parented to this plastic, remember? So if we hit RX90, hit enter, that will turn our um, everything back into camera, into rendered, um, back into camera to view. I'm gonna just like move this around. Once I'm done with that, uncheck, untick that, hit zero. We're just gonna simply rotate this um, object. So on frame zero, I'm just gonna hit zero in there to go to the first frame so on the zeroth frame we're going to add a rotation keyframe by hitting i while hovering over these buttons that will add a keyframe and i'm thinking how long do i want my animation to be literally i go on this website like every single day <laughs> so I change of frame rate to 24 and if i want it, if i want it to last eight seconds does it i need 192 frames so we'll make it last 192 frames down here and um, make your animation start um, at zero so on the 192th frame 192nd frame we're going to change this z value to 360 and it will look like nothing's changed just make sure you hover over that press i to insert a keyframe but if you notice, everything will have rotated. Yeah, yeah. So if you go into camera mode and you move along the animation, you'll see that it's rotating. I'm gonna change this window up here to 3D viewport and I'm gonna put that in camera mode and press N to hide that window. I'm gonna actually rotate the camera. Um, this way. Looks kinda weird. I know. But that should give it quite a cool effect. And that's really all the animation that I'm going to include in this. Purely because, like, um, I don't want to go too ham. We've done quite, we've covered quite a few principles in this already. I'm just checking how the rotation's going to look. Okay, sick. So the one last thing we're going to do before we render out is we're going to do some a little tiny bit of compositing. As always, it's always good to do this. The first thing you want to do is hit F12 on your keyboard. This will render out. Looks quite pixelated to be fair. Um, one second. The way to fix this is to go into 
select your your um, your thingy my bob and in render change this number down here to four hit f12 and the pixelation should disappear yeah nice we're gonna go up here to the compositing tab um, click use nodes and you must have seen this again on some other animation on some other videos so don't bother if you really know how to do this I'm going to add a viewer node not split viewer and I'm going to add some glare and plug this image into image so now we can kind of see what's going on and I, I'm Quite, I quite like that, but to be fair, if you put it to high, the glare becomes a bit less prominent. In a second, it will become less prominent. Um, I quite like that, I think I might leave it at that. So, the next and final thing is rendering out our animation. If you're doing this in Eevee, then these are the steps you need to follow. Um, double check your bloom is the way you like it and all of those things there yeah. but if you're happy with that then make sure you've got 1920 by 1920 out here make sure you're not in the temp folder create a new folder um so i'm just going to go onto desktop covid vaccine and in here this is where you want to call your your animation so i'm going to call it intravid 19 hit accept over here change png to ffmpeg Right, FFmpeg video under encoding change Matroska to MPEG4 or QuickTime or AVI. Um, I think those three are okay, but I always go for MPEG4, H.264, and change medium to perceptually lossless. Yeah, so that's perfect. Um, so now it's just gonna render out in its it's wonderful glory so once it's rendered out you can just play the animation and this is what we've got i hope this was useful i know i went into quite extensive detail in some parts <coughs> okay um i don't think i'll be making many videos this long um, but I just knew I had to make something for all the blender fetuses out there that you know are just doing this stuff for the first time and just needed something extensive detailed and just very like you know honing in on the basics of what you need to get down um so if you like this this kind of longer style let me know if you want shorter videos and I can do that as well I hope that this is brought you closer to 3d and not actually like pushed you away um because that would be like awful um <coughs> i think i'm gonna leave it here and again thank you for all the support um i just do this thing because i love doing it and i'm so glad that other people are starting to love it through me that just makes me so happy so take care stay safe and we'll see you very very well there's no one else here it's just me i will see you very very soon i promise thanks again for watching